Does Satan judge the Christian church? I had a comment on one of my videos, and I'm going to put the comment up here. It's from Anne Marie 2964, and she wrote, The first part of the tribulation is Satan's judgment on the church. So, of course, the church will be here. The last seven judgments is when God's wrath is poured out on those who follow Antichrist. Pre-wrath rapture is what makes the most sense. Um, I can tell you right now that that is completely 100% false on her part. How do I know that? Well, just do a very simple word study about judgment or judge, and you will not find it connected to the devil one time. Not once. Um, look it up, and you'll see that I'm right. Um, so... That's where it can really end, right there, but I'm gonna, going to show you some scriptures here about all future judgment is committed to three different categories, I'll say, okay? Number one, you have God judging. Number two, the saints, because we are born again, we're part of God's body, right? And number three, the written scriptures. Those are the three standards of judgment. The devil never judges anybody, okay? He accuses. We'll get back to that, but he does not judge. Romans chapter 14, verse 8 through 12 says, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, not Satan. As it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall uh, confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God, not the devil. Please understand that. You will not be held accountable to the devil. Oh, the Antichrist, he's going to be unleashed by Satan or something. Excuse me? Um, I don't think so. Read the book of Revelation, chapter 6. It's the Lord, Jesus Christ who is found worthy to open the seals and to loose uh, the different plagues and things there on the earth. It's the Lord that does it. It's not the devil. And well, the, no, it's the Lord. He's, he's looking in at seeing the seals and it's the devil that's doing it on the earth. Uh, could you please prove that from scripture? It isn't, there's no proof of that. And again, I, I answered this stuff in another study years ago because a uh, little false prophet, Stephen Anderson came out and he said, well, you know, if it's the Lord that's doing the first seven seals, then that means that there's the, the souls that are slain for the word of God under the altar, and it was apparently the Lord that did that. Well, actually it was, because you see the people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble are those that have rejected Jesus Christ right now. Right now you can get saved in the church age. It's not hard, it's easy, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, that time is for those who have rejected Jesus Christ specifically for the time, or for the uh, Jewish people. But uh, again, we give account of ourselves to God. God judges us, not the devil. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 11 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Let me just stop there. If you're not aware of what the Bible teaches, the Bible does not teach that the devil is down in hell ruling from a fiery throne. Uh, the devil's in heaven right now. So what? Uh, what? Did he, he just say that? Yes, I did. Because that's what the Bible says. The devil does not get cast out of heaven until the future. Or if you're, a, you know, some of the nuts out there, the preterists and whatever else they teach that i guess the devil's already cast out and he's down here on the earth or something else and uh it's all just symbolic and whatever uh yeah people are nuts uh no the the devil's in heaven right now and he gets cast out into the future and that's why he's down here making all kinds of trouble on the earth with the antichrist and the false prophet and the dragon okay the dragon being referenced to satan we just read it there but look at verse 10 revelation chapter 12 verse 10 and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of, of our brethren is cast down, 
which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, an accuser would be kind of like a prosecuting attorney, but that prosecuting attorney is not the judge, right? He doesn't have any final say-so. Well, the devil, he can accuse the brethren. He can come out and he can say things that are nasty and whatever else, but uh, he can't judge. The devil's not judging any Christian. The devil's not the one opening the seven seals, all right? Please do not fall for that heresy. It's a very ridiculous thing to say. Uh, but let me give you another verse of scripture here. John chapter 12, verses 44 through 48. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So well, then, I don't understand. How do we get judged by Jesus, by the Lord then? Um, keep reading, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. God's word is what judges us, not um, the devil, okay? Um, please do not fall for that. And uh, the commenter, um, I realize uh, there's a lot of false prophets out there and they deceive a lot of people. They want you to believe that the pre-trib is a fib and all this other stuff and whatever else. I've answered every single argument that there is about the rapture issue, every single one of them. And um, I've never had one person be able to gainsay or resist what I've said and, um, and answer things and, and uh, destroy what I've taught over the years. Uh, they might try, but um, it's, and again, it's not me, it's, it's what the Bible teaches. Um, you see behind me here is the wood racks. I had two different wood racks. You can see the one's a little higher than the other. And I moved them and put them together, lifted them up, put them on some logs there and over there right there two logs down we peeled those yesterday my son peeled a lot of them actually himself it's pretty neat and um unfortunately i got the the wood all stacked into here the pile that i had that i showed earlier in the year and i still need another row that row's not quite done up there and uh, i still need another row to get the amount of wood that i need for the year so Back out there to the woods. Time to fell some more trees and saw them into firewood length and split them. It's one of the things about living off grid. Uh, but that's what we love, that's what we like to do. I just thought I'd show this wood rack here. But um, a lot of scrap lumber and things going into building this stuff and old roofing up here, old scrap roofing that I have. But um, it's just so important to not be deceived, brethren, and you know, I know how to argue with these people, okay? I've spent years, the catching up issue, the rapture issue, as it were, uh, that's the, the subject that I actually know the best. Uh, Bible version issue probably after that. I've read a lot of books on that, studied for 24 years on that. Um, but the catching up issue, I've heard all the arguments, I've heard all the attacks on what the Bible teaches, um, everything. The John Nelson Darby, the 1820 C.I. Schofield, uh, all the stuff. And um, I've answered it all, all right? Uh, the body of Christ is not appointed to God's wrath. Um, we are not appointed to this time to be judged. Uh, John is in heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed. There are 24 elders in heaven. There's a great multitude of angels around about the throne. Uh, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Um, it would be completely inconsistent with the nature of God to pour out his judgment and his wrath upon the body of Christ. Uh, it's not consistent with the theme of scripture. Um, I mean, there are Christians that do some dumb things and that have some carnality issues and whatever, but for God to pour out his judgment and wrath upon them? No, no. God has never done that before. And um, of course there are different typologies throughout the scriptures. Um, Noah, in type, goes through the judgment in an ark. He's protected by God. But Noah's not a type of the New Testament Christian. Um, he's a type of a sealed 
Jew um, that's there. And he's uh, a man of pure, um, perfect in his generations, the Bible says. And yet he's going and he has a bunch of animals, clean and unclean animals with him. Um, you, so you can't make that into a Christian. Uh, Lot, he's taken out of the city, but he's not taken out of the earth and whatever else. Yeah, but then you have um, Elijah that is actually caught up uh, and doesn't see death. You have Enoch. Enoch being a type of a Christian. He walked with the Lord. We're supposed to walk with the Lord. So, just uh, watch out for that stuff. So the three things that you have to worry about as a Christian in terms of being judged, um, <clears throat> number one, you have the judgment of God. For a Christian, that will be the judgment seat of Christ. It's not the great white throne judgment. Again, that's for the lost world, the people that have rejected Jesus Christ. Um, we're not worried about the great white throne judgment. Judgment seat of Christ, your works are judged. You are not judged. The judgment for a Christian, uh, or for you, comes when you come to the Lord as a sinner. And the Bible talks about, um, you know, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. All right? So self-judgment comes in there. And that self-judgment has to start by you looking in the mirror and saying, you know what? I am a sinner. I am deserving of hell. Hmm. You know, uh, Jesus Christ can save me. The Bible says that he died on the cross to pay for my sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if I call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, I believe that he will save me. And you do that. That's what you do. So you judge yourself. Um, and then as a Christian, once you are truly born again, then you can judge other Christians, you can judge other people, but just make sure you're not doing it you know, hypocritically. Remove the beam out of your own eye so that you can get the moat out of your brother's eye. Say, hey, you know what? I used to struggle with pornography. I used to struggle with alcohol. I used to struggle with laziness. I used to struggle with smoking and, and name it. I used to watch a lot of Hollywood movies and things like that, and I don't anymore. Why? Because I, I found that that stuff was very displeasing to the Lord. That's why. See? And uh, the Bible is what judges you. That's the standard. Okay, that's how this whole thing works. But to say that the some weird teaching that the first part of the Great Tribulation is, which is not a title for that time it's coming, nowhere in Scripture, in the King James Bible, is it given as a title. It's a description, yes, not a title. But, you know, uh, in the Great Tribulation, uh, saints are going to be judged. Yeah, saints will be judged, uh, definitely, um, by the devil. You know, yeah, uh, no, they won't. Okay. You say, but there are saints there. Yeah, saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, saints is just a gen generic term for anybody that's ever been saved. Uh, past, present, and future. Okay, it's not the same thing as somebody who's in Christ. Uh, a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble can be judged to the point where they could actually lose their salvation. Um, uh, you know, you take the mark, and the Bible says, if any man takes the mark, worships the beast in his image, and... Uh, you know, then he will get the wrath of God. Well, that would include a Christian, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. That's how you know it. We're not going to go through it. Because if you did, then the Holy Spirit would be a liar. Because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. A promise unto the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 4. So, um, again, I, I see this thing all the time in the comments. Uh, well, you do, I don't think you really proved your point. You know, well, I can't in a 20-minute video walking through the woods and things showcasing God's creation, I can't give you all the doctrines and all the other things, but that's why I spent you know, many years putting all the doctrinal stuff together and preaching for many hours, proving my points. And if you're going to be too lazy to go back and watch the hours of study and go through the scriptures and search the scriptures to see if these things are so, then it's not my fault that you get deceived. All right? That's just how it works. So... See if I can get this beautiful butterfly on camera here. Now, don't fly off. He's making, he's not being photogenic here. All right, now he flew again. Every time I get near, I guess he doesn't like my red shirt or something. Hey, look, I'm a big red flower. 
Uh, let me see if I can turn this around here quick. Let's see if I can get this guy. Right there he is. This thing does not have a very good zoom lens on it. If you see him right there, there's a beautiful butterfly. There he went again. All right. So, I just spin this thing around. But that will be it for this little video here, little walk and talk sermon thing. Doing some experimenting with this. Putting in some more scriptures and things like that. So, just wanting to see if this will work. And um, so, that will be it for this study. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.